uh, this time out. Mr. Yaz asked us a while ago whether we would share our thoughts on Relics and Diploma on the show. And the answer is no. Uh, I haven't got any thoughts on Relics at the moment. I'll go and find some for another day. But Diploma, I thought I would uh, talk about this week because we have talked about it on the show before. Um, but the company's had an interesting week. The stock was up 10% uh, yesterday, which is Wednesday uh, after some news, and it's very much a case that it's Diploma doing Diploma things, and that is a very, very positive uh, thing. So, yeah, been a fan for some time. This is an industrial distribution conglomerate. They send out, uh, they work out of three segments, their control, seals, and life sciences. Um, life sciences involves kind of machinery. Seals involves kind of, uh, well, nuts and bolts, more on those in a little bit, and controls is things like specialized components. Um, over the last five years, the stock's up 160 or so percent, not including, uh, so that's your return, plus the um, dividend and the underlying business has done pretty well as well. Revenue's up 147%, operating income's up 150%. Um, and that, by the way, bearing in mind this is a company that is strictly in the industrial space, we can say things in a little bit about why they're not prone to the usual industrial uh ups and downs from cyclicality but in the last five years there's been a pandemic there's been massive inflation there's been high interest rates and there's been more than one recession uh, in the uk and diploma has uh, done very very well if you think uh, whatever you think an unhelpful macroeconomic environment looks like for diploma it's seen one of those in the last five years and it's done pretty well kind of regardless which i think is probably worth um taking note of here so this thing grows in two ways Uh, one is quote unquote organically and the other is quote unquote inorganically which i suppose is the only ways that anything can grow because it's either organic or it isn't but uh that is to say it tries to um buy things and add them on so acquisitions and it tries to get more out of the businesses it currently has getting more out of the businesses it currently has involves getting them into new markets so if you have a small company and you have a large distribution network, you can help your small company sell things into markets it couldn't reach before because it didn't have a distribution network, and now it does. Uh, You can also add more products to your existing distribution things, you can share technical expertise, and you can avoid duplication of things like HR and accounting and and the like. So lots of ways you can generate organic growth, which is to say a growth you didn't get just by acquiring things. But that's not what's been going on uh, this week. This week, Diploma has acquired or has announced that it is going to acquire a company called Peerless Fasteners, which is, uh, I think I said to you off air before we started, Steve, like the most Diploma company you can think of to buy. That's probably not quite true because you probably couldn't think of it before you read about it uh, in this thing. But um, they make nuts and bolts for the aerospace sector based in the US. Um, and what they get from that then is uh, a bigger presence outside the US, specifically in the EU through Diploma's distribution network. Diploma increases its kind of US footprint, so immediate win on either side here. Uh, Peerless has been, by itself, as a, an independent and separate company, growing its earnings at about 9% per year. Um, that's pretty good, uh, you might think, and it's been doing that for some time. That's organic uh, growth in this case. Diploma is paying on a forward earnings basis um, a price that implies a PE ratio of 7 Um, And that roughly tells you everything you need to know about Diploma and this particular acquisition. Uh, That's what they do. They find companies, they buy them at low multiples, um, and they add and grow their um, bottom line dividend, everything uh, like that. It's it's impressive stuff. Um, Diploma shares themselves don't look cheap at uh, today's prices. After that jump, they're at a P-E ratio of about 42, which is not cheap by anyone's standards, especially not UK standards. But in fairness, this doesn't behave much like a UK FTSE 100 stock. Um, 42 is a big number uh, to pay of earnings for anything. Diploma is clearly doing very, very well. Uh, you can assume that the most recent uh, acquisition is now priced in pretty well. It seems unlikely that it won't go through. But it's being built into that share price at the moment. I sort of wonder um, with a. I feel like looking at a price earnings ratio of 42 is both intelligent and not intelligent. Here's the reason it is it's expensive. There's growth priced into this thing. There is no question of that. If you try and work out what your returns are likely to be, then you will find pretty quickly that um, they only make any sense if that earnings number gets bigger. Uh, and that's, that's correct. However, um, you could arguably have said the same thing five years ago. This was trading at a PE ratio of 33. Uh, based on the amount that their earnings have grown, 
it's now trading on about 12 times those earnings. So if you wait five years, all of a sudden what you have is a growth machine that looks extremely cheap. Um, I was thinking about this uh, at the start, uh, earlier this week when I was writing. It's got a £5 billion market cap. It feels to me like, I don't want to say it feels to me like, it clearly is uh, the case that it's a long time till they run into the law of large numbers. Um, when you look at acquisitions, the problem with acquisitive companies is that they eventually make a mistake, they eventually overpay. Uh, and the reason they make mistakes and overpay is because they're running out of decent targets that can make a meaningful difference to their market cap. I think the peerless acquisition, uh, or at least peerless future acquisition, is probably the best sign you can get that that's not happening to Diploma just yet. Uh, a 5 billion market cap means they have loads of opportunities that are too small for, say, the likes of Berkshire Hathaway. Feels like a Berkshire par- uh, purchased this thing, actually. Um, to be interested in Buffett's not buying anything at whatever it was, a few hundred million uh, in this case, because it's just not worth it. It's worth it to Diploma, though. Uh, and yeah, seven times earnings for something growing at 9% is just the kind of deal you don't seem to be able to do on the stock market at the moment. Steve, impressed? I'm not impressed that you missed the opportunity to call this a bolt-on acquisition, Steve. Um, but... Uh, ah. <laughs> But yeah, this is um, this this is a really good strategic fit. You can see this. Uh, so, uh, Diploma have uh, an established position in aerospace fasteners. They're adding airframe uh, to this as well, which means that it gives them a little broader product offering. You know, if you don't want this, could you take that kind of uh, thing? So that that's a really uh, interesting little addition. Uh, like you say, Steve, it's a really attractive. Um, um, valuation it's a it's like seven times next year's ebit i think they're saying here so that's quite um that's not expensive in any way shape or form um yeah it just looks it looks really pretty good organic revenue kager of nine percent significant head, headroom for growth because they're going to enter this new market and uh, Diploma obviously are buying a pretty decent management team here uh, uh, as well. And Diploma are a hands-off kind of manager. Uh, they, they're a bit like Berkshire in that they give these companies a, a nice home. And then they, um, they they let them do their business. Um, so, yeah, it looks all... I mean, there's nothing in this There's nothing in this announcement that you sort of scratch your head and think, well, what, why? Why have you... You know, why is this a... What, you know, why have you done that? This is... This is, like you say, Steve, the most diploma thing they could have possibly bought. And, um, yeah, it's uh, it looks like it's going to tie in with everything they offer. Well, really, really well, to be honest. So, yeah, nothing to dislike in, in here at all, Steve. One of the things to kind of note about these sort of <laughs> nuts and bolts um, companies, the, this is lifted straight out of the Business Breakdowns episode on this, by the way. Um, it helps their kind of basic locality in that if you have... A plane or something uh, that needs a nut or a bolt it's unlikely you're going to leave that plane grounded because you don't want to buy a nut or a bolt um, in order to uh, have it flying again if you think big pieces of machinery it doesn't have to be planes in diploma's case but this particular example is big pieces of machinery when they're not doing stuff are effectively a waste for the people that own them um, these are industrial manufacturing things and yeah there are downturns in those end markets there are times when manufacturing is um, strong and times when it isn't but even when it isn't you don't want it to be the case that you're not manufacturing because you need um, something like a nut uh, or a set of bolts or anything like that so, I mean, that really helps uh, with these kind of things. It helps their kind of um, cash flow, helps their, um, uh, yeah, acyclicality, I guess, even though the end markets they sell into are quite uh, cyclical. And that's an interesting and important point to, I think, notice here. It's, um, yeah, it's adds to the very diploma-like feel of it. Yeah, just looking at the funding as well here, um, Steve. So mm. um, looks like they've extended bank facilities 555 million revolving credit facility maturing in 2028 it's got a couple of one-year extension options on the top of that as well and u.s private placement issuance um so a bond issuance raising 250 million euros uh with a mix of 7 10 and 12 year maturities all in blended fixed coupon of 4.28 percent so uh, it'd be nice to uh, have a look at them i think uh, a 12 year of 4.2 well i suppose it would have been a bit more than that i, I would assume the longer term bonds um but but a blended fixed coupon on 7, 10, and 12 at 4.28. 
Yeah, it's pretty attractive. Uh, I wouldn't imagine, uh, and and it's a decent return for the investors as well. So you can see why it was taken up. So, um, yeah, it looks like it's going to be made as a cash payment, two hundred twenty-eight million in cash, and then uh, the remaining three point five percent will be paid based on um, on peerless management's performance in f- uh, financial year twenty-seven as well. So there's a little bit held back there, and a little bit of incentive for them to carry on performing, um, and diplomas balance sheet not hurt at all by this year end leverage is about 1.3x um with no further acquisitions which i find is probably unlikely uh diploma will likely make two or three more uh between now and the uh the end of the year so yeah it looks uh all good to me steve i think diploma is one of those stocks that people look at and just think you know the six percent top line growth and maybe eight percent bottom line growth and they you know even though the free cash flow conversion is really high usually 90 percent um, people sort of look at that and think it's just too expensive and um, as you say um, you know 40 is a high number 35 40 is a high PE number but when somebody's churning out consistent bottom line growth um, you know it, th- those numbers soon diminish and I think that's the case with uh, with diploma but is this one that you do you still own this one Steve like, uh, uh, or is this one that you've got rid of I have got rid of it. I very artlessly got rid of it at a time when it was a lot cheaper than it is now. Um, that's not always been the case with my stocks that I've sold, especially my UK stocks, actually. Um, but no, this was a very, very badly timed um, sell on my case. I had a sort of value burst and thought, um, I'm done with waiting for Diploma to do stuff. I think this number is just too high that I'm currently selling it at. I'm not quite sure exactly where it was, but it was a lot lower than it is now. Um, and that was a very, very bad move, and that makes it that bit harder to try and get back into it at these prices, even though when you look at this, then, okay, they're financing it with four and something percent here, and they're buying it at an earnings yield of about 15 or something like that, um, and I think even in their first year, they're going to get more than 4% back in this uh, to make their debt payments, so they're well away uh, from the get-go, as far as I can tell, uh, plus, as we've been pointing out, even with a, with a company like Diploma, you can justify playing slightly higher multiples if you think you're going to get better returns out of this company than it can generate by itself. Okay, you're growing at 9%, uh, let's suppose, and you're paying a, getting an earnings yield to start off with of, let's say, 15, uh, just to round it a little bit. Um, sure, but you can expect that number to go higher in the case of Diploma, so you can justify paying slightly better than that, not that they have uh, in this case. So... Um, yeah, I, I'm impressed by this. I do not still own it. I, I guess say I wish I did. Um, if I hadn't sold it when I did, I'd probably have sold it since because I'm not very good like that. I am staring at Southern Copper and uh, refusing uh, to go anywhere near that sell button because at least it makes my portfolio look nicer uh, with a big green number next to it. It would have looked a lot nicer with diploma shares still there though, Steve. You've been watching a segment from the Playing FTSE show, brought to you in association with our favourite broker, Trading212. For the full version of the show, check us out on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you check us out in the link in description, there's a free share in it for you with Trading212 if you open a new account. Just use the code FTSE so they know we sent you.